Hey budget nerds, got another video for you. Today we'll look at this little beauty. It's a cable verifier multimeter combo from Tooltop, model ET628. It's fairly inexpensive, so stick around to see if it's any good. Tooltop reached out and sent this. As always, I'm honest in all my reviews. These thoughts are my own. With any product like this from China, the price can vary depending on where you buy it, but it seems to be between $47 and $58. So make sure you shop around should you decide it's for you. It'll let you test Ethernet cable length, verify an Ethernet cable is good, let you tone and ID cables, check for PoE power, and a few other things. On the multimeter side, it will let you do all the things your basic multimeter will let you do, such as check for DC, AC voltage and amps, continuity, resistance, as well as measure temperature and BNC or coaxial cable length tests. It also has this red laser on the top to check uh, for line faults, which I guess is only for fiber. I didn't cover it all, but these are the highlights. In the box, you get a bag. In the bag, you get some instructions, a USB cable for charging, the probing tool, which lets you support analog or digital toning, and will also help you map an ethernet cable. It has a flashlight as well, and takes a nine volt battery, which it comes with. You can switch through its various modes by pressing or holding the mode button. It'll switch between analog and digital modes and silence it, which is good because it's loud. It also comes with a cable with alligator clips on it and the probes for the multimeter functions. They feel fine and they come with these protective covers. You also get the temperature probe, a short ethernet cable for connecting or for tests, three remote ethernet cable IDs and the scanner multimeter itself. It looks pretty good, I guess, if not a bit basic. There's only four buttons on this thing and that sort of lets you know one of two things. One, this device's features and menus will be a pain to navigate. Or two, this device is basic enough to only need basic inputs and it's the latter for sure. Press and hold the mode button to turn it on. The screen is pretty large and pretty easy to read as long as you get a good angle. Tilting it down makes the screen hard to read. The other angles are fine. Turning it on, you can see it starts with length testing. It shows you which port to use on the device, which I think is great. The remote ID things worked well, and I checked them as far apart as I could, which really wasn't that far uh, from my garage to my network rack, and they worked fine. As for the cable length test, it seemed to work pretty well. You can calibrate it like you can do with most any cable length tester. The manual tells you how to do it, but I wasn't having any luck. Turns out you have to use a cable longer than 15 feet or 5 meters, or it won't do anything. Once I got a cable that was long enough, it worked just fine. You can test or map an ethernet cable using the remote tools, or by plugging both ends into the tester. It also worked well. I checked the voltage on the battery that came with the probe tool, using the ethernet port and cable with the alligator clips. I got 9.9 .9 volts, seems maybe a bit high, and then I tested it with the multimeter probing cables instead and it read 8.41 volts which seems maybe a bit low. I tested it on my Klein multimeter and it read 8.76. I tested again on the tooltop multimeter and got 8.70, so it works but might not be the most accurate meter. If you just check the occasional thing and doesn't have to be spot on, it'll do that. You can also test for power over Ethernet, and it did this just fine when I checked my PoE switch. It read 51 volts, which is normally 48, but 51 is within the range you may see. A really handy feature of these network testers is the tone and probe feature. You can use this to send a signal down a cable and then use this probing tool to find out which cable has the signal. This kit will let you do this in digital or analog mode. 
Both have their advantages, with digital being quiet until the signal is picked up. The wheel lets you fine-tune the sensitivity to help you quickly narrow it down. For me, I couldn't narrow it down any further between these two until I added some physical separation between the cables. The temperature feature worked well after calibrating it, and I won't bore you with the rest of the features, as you could look them up, but they all worked fine, with the only issue being my question about potential accuracy. So this thing does give you some good features for a pretty good price. There are a few things I didn't like though. Let's go over those right now. As mentioned, the screen's viewing angle isn't great when tilting it down. It also looks like you have to remove the back panel to change out the battery. It's a one cell LiPo rated at 1,250 milliamp hours. It would be nice if there was a battery door, but oh well. Upon taking it apart, you can see it does have a fuse that's rated at 10 amps and 600 volts, so that's good. The alligator clips are a little slippery, and my fingers would sometimes slip off. This might be an issue if it causes me to touch something I shouldn't, or make an electrical connection where I wouldn't want to. This tester won't certify speed or length of a cable. It's just basic information. At first, the menu was a bit confusing to work my way through, but the manual does help there, and I figured it out pretty quick. The buttons don't always register every press, and sometimes you have to press it again, or sometimes I found myself pressing a bit harder to make sure I knew I was pressing it. It's possible the buttons worked fine, but the interface was slow to change modes. It's hard to say. The screen, aside from the viewing angle, is great, but the backlight does bleed through the red plastic. It's not a huge deal, but you won't be getting any extra nerd street cred with a look like this. Also the plastic cover or cap that went over this temperature plug wasn't screwed on all the way, and slid off when I tried to unplug it. It wasn't broke and screwed right on and was fine, but it's these little things that you find with something like this does what it says it'll do, but it lacks that fine polish. Lastly, the multimeter plugs that go into the unit fit fine, but are not as snug as I would expect them to be. I don't think it's a major issue, but they do come out easier than I thought they would. It's not hard to find a multimeter like this at this price. If all you need is a multimeter, you can find some at your local hardware store that are just as good or better. Where this thing stands out is also offering some basic network probing and testing features in one unit. If you could use both and really like the idea of having these two things in one unit, then it makes sense. If you just need it for a few projects here and there, you don't have to have pinpoint accuracy or any crazy advanced features, then it's not a bad little unit. Otherwise, you might give it some more thought. Check the description for a link to grab one should you want one. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.